the Johnson Wax Program with Fibber McGee and Molly. The makers of Johnson's Wax and Johnson's Self-Polishing Glow Coat present Fibber McGee and Molly, written by Don Quinn, with songs by Martha Tilton and the King's Men, and music by Billy Mills. The show opens with Who Cares? thing about this month of December. It's the one month when you really want your home to look its best, and yet you're busier than any other time of the year. What's the answer to that problem? Genuine Johnson's Wax, the famous polish that makes floors, furniture, and woodwork gleam with rich beauty and saves you work in the bargain. Women who practice protective housekeeping with Johnson's Wax don't have to worry about things like the Christmas holidays. Their homes are ready on short notice for entertaining, and their floors can take all the extra punishment that vacationing children have in store for them. The tough protective coat of Johnson's Wax acts as a shield, guarding finishes against wear, and making daily housework easier, too. More and more housekeepers are Johnson waxing their window sills, picture frames, and leather articles, in addition to floors, furniture, and woodwork. In fact, there are 100 extra labor-saving uses for genuine Johnson's Wax, which you can now buy in three forms, paste, liquid, or the new cream wax. Make a note now to buy some tomorrow. <laughs> Sometimes we wonder if moving pictures are a good influence on growing men. Or maybe our hero is just too impressionable. Anyway, ever since he saw Mr. Ronald Coleman a few nights ago, he has developed a British accent and started a mustache. <laughs> if you could call that pathetic little growth on his upper lip a mustache. For further details, we refer you to Fibber McGee and Molly. For goodness sakes, McGee, put that looking glass away and stop printing. Oh, come, come, old girl. <laughs> And a chap try to put in a decent appearance McGee, without... McGee, please. Huh? Please, dearie, drop that phony English accent. You sound like a stock company juvenile. With adenoids. <laughs> stock company juvenile? <laughs> oh, I say, that's uh, jolly good, really. <laughs> oh, I give up. I'll go over to Mrs. Toops for a while. Oh, please. Molly, just because I'm trying to improve myself. You think that mustache improved, Jenny? Frankly, I do, Molly. Oh, not that I expect to look as good as Ronald Coleman. <laughs> Though I am better built. Not better, dearie. Mm -hmm. You're just a little more uh, buxom in the belt. Well, anyway, this mustache is going to change my whole personality. Don't you think it gives me a kind of an uh, air? No, but that stuff you're putting on it does. <laughs> what on earth is that? Oh, this lotion? Oh, that's a recipe the old timer gave me. Says it's marvelous for mustaches. Been in his family for generations. Well, it smells like it. Hmm? <laughs> Why don't they mix up a fresh batch? Okay, okay, okay. Scoff if you want to. But you'll be sorry. Hey, Johnny. Here's a different kind of lotion. Try this on your mustache. Okay, old timer. Much obliged. This other stuff you brought me don't seem to do much good. I know. Brought you the wrong recipe. Huh? That was Grandma's homemade fly spray. Ooh. <laughs> Heavenly days. Fly spray. Hey, you might have poisoned me, old timer. It's a good thing you come back. Oh, it won't hurt human beings none, Johnny. Oh. Grandma fed a spoonful to my cousin Trimble, and he never suffered no ill effects. That's all. That is, unless you call running around the block screaming and hiccuping the ill effects. <laughs> Say, uh, does your grandmother put up a lot of these home remedies, Mr. Old Timer? Sure does, daughter. Never forget the time my boy Rance got his arm caught in the lawnmower. Well, sir, Grandma come trotting out, yanked his arm loose, rubbed some awful smelling salve onto it, give it a couple of jerks, and that lawnmower run just as good as ever. <laughs> well, leave me know if this stuff don't help, Johnny. <laughs> taking quite an interest in your mustache, dearie. Yeah, he says his whole family is affected that way. 
You know, his great-grandmother got scared by a bicycle at the St. Louis Exposition. And believe it or not, Molly, when his father grew up, he had handlebar mustaches. <laughs> Why, isn't heredity interesting? <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a mince pie in the oven. Oh, dear, I wonder who that is. Well, whoever it is, now, don't say anything about my mustache, Molly. Let's see if they notice. Well, uh, can't I just point and uh, snicker a little? <laughs> no, please, Miss Molly. Come in. Uh, good day, my dear. Hello there, McGee. Oh, hello, Mr. Mayor. Hi, Latrivia. What's cooking? McGee, if there's anything I deplore, it is the idiotic custom of opening a conversation with such senseless questions as what's cooking, how's everything, and what you know. They are meaningless and unanswerable. Uh, it's just silly, isn't it? <laughs> I never thought of it that way before, did you, Molly? Well, frequently, you must know. Oh. But if you'll excuse me, Mr. Mayor, I've got to run out in the kitchen a minute. Certainly, Mr. McGee. And I must say, something smells delicious. What's cooking? <laughs> The question is meaningless, but it ain't unanswerable, Latrib. It's a mince pie. Yes, and if I don't go take a look well, at it... Well, Latrib, you notice anything different about me? No, I don't believe I do, McGee. Oh, I say, old chap, take a good look. It's something new for me, you know, really. Something new, eh? Yes, really. No, no don't tell me, don't tell me. Let's begin. <laughs> I really did it because I always admired yours so much, Latrib. <laughs> Catch on to it? Oh, oh how stupid of me. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, thanks. You've had your shoes shine. <laughs> No, no, no. You don't get it. Take a gander at my upper lip. I can't see your lip with all those whiskers on it. What do you mean, whiskers? That's a mustache. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Of course, of course. And very becoming to you, too. Oh, you think so? Yeah. Hey, Molly, the trivia thinks it looks good on me. Oh, do you really, Mr. Mayor? Indeed I do, Mrs. McGee. <laughs> In fact, your husband's name came up this morning in regard to some Chamber of Commerce business, and my secretary said, now, if Mr. McGee only had something in front of his face. <laughs> But let's get back to business. If you only had something in front of... <coughs> uh, what business, Fred? <laughs> I'm uh, seriously considering renting the house next door to you, McGee. Oh. When you plan on bringing over your other shirt and coffee pot, La Trivia? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not settled definitely, McGee. The man who lived there before, Mr. Gildersleeve, I believe... Uh, where did he move to? Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, yes, yes. Well, he told me he had quite some trouble with his next-door neighbor. Now, tell me, who lives on the other side of that house? You mean you don't know? Know what, Mrs. McGee? The house on the other side of that house, Latrivia, ain't a house. It's a vacant lot. Oh, then he must have meant that... Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh, I don't believe it. Quite. <laughs> but... I shall investigate further. Good day, Mrs. McGee. And uh, McGee. Yeah? Tell your mustache that the strange man is leaving and it can come out now. Martha Tilton saying kiss the boys goodbye. We're such a happy pair That it isn't right No, it isn't fair To all those other boys I I gave the air. Oh, Danny, let me stay out late. For tomorrow is a wedding day. Can't the baby kind of celebrate? Kiss the boys goodbye. Daddy, let me wear the ring. What's the difference what the neighbors sing? Let the baby linger on the ring. Kiss the boys goodbye. And while I'm kissing them sentimentally, keep the liberal point of view. Because I'm breaking it to them gently that my heart belongs to you. So, Daddy, please remember this. That tomorrow starts a lot of bliss. Let me show them what they're gonna miss. Kiss the boys goodbye. Be reasonable, Daddy. Give me one more night to play. I want to sever all my connections in a ladylike sort of way. I can't afford to have a scene on my wedding day. I'd hate to have 17 fellas give the bride away. So, Daddy, please remember this. That tomorrow's got the lot to bliss. Let me show them what they're gonna miss. Kiss the boys goodbye. 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 Goodbye.
Let me show you what you're gonna miss. It's the Fourth of Had up her lip, but it quivered in the storm. So I raised a little mustache, just keep warm. Oh, I had a dead rat, this looking glass. Makes me look like Dracula with a hangover. Oh, I had a little mustache. Calling me, dear. Don't get mushy with me. Look, I just saw your watch on the dress, and the crystal has gone out of it. You want me to take it down to the jeweler's? No, thanks. I took it out myself. I got it right here, I have. What are you using it for? <laughs> well... <laughs> I jolly well wanted to see how I'd look in a monocle. <laughs> well, how did it look, if you'll pardon my morbid curiosity? <laughs> I couldn't say, really. I had to squint so hard to keep the boy thing screwed in, I couldn't see. <laughs> look, now, I admire the British just as much as you do, dearie, but take it easy. It's dangerous. What do you mean, dangerous, Mom? The first time you start driving on the left-hand side of the road, you will be in a man. <laughs> Come in. McGee's residence? Oh, rather, old fellow. But we usually ask the tradesmen to deliver merchandise at the rear, you know. Oh, zip it up, Orson. <laughs> Here, sign the receipt. What's this package? Some stuff this guy bought down at Haggerty's Snuggery Tuggery. Much obliged, lady. And you, Basil. Hey. Quit trying to act like a yank at Oxford and just be a jerk at home. <laughs> it up there. Well, why that fresh mug? Well, say, what have you been buying down at Haggery's Snuggery Toggery? Oh, I thought I might as well go all the way, Molly, as long as I'm improving my appearance. I got a black Homburg hat and a pair of yellow gloves and some spats and a walking stick. Well, heavenly day. Yeah. What is the world coming to? And when? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll admit the walking stick might be a touch too much, but you can't... Oh, no. Huh? No, it isn't, McGee. If you wear the spats and yellow gloves, you'll need to carry your stick. And maybe some brass knuckles. <laughs> well, let's see if I sent my godfers into this package. Oh, dad, that They forgot something. Oh, I say, dear boy, what did the chappies forget? Your shooting jacket for formal crap games? <laughs> now nah, them stupid goons forgot to put in my purple velvet smoking jacket. Your pur- Oh, uh, will your lordship excuse me if I sit down a moment? I'm a little overwhelmed. <laughs> Oh, don't be like that, Molly. Don't you want your husband to be well-groomed? Don't you want me to look smooth? Oh, you'll be smooth, all right. You wear those spats and yellow gloves and somebody will polish you off. (laughs) But say, tell me, uh, did you only get one smoking jacket? Sure. You think I need two? Well, won't you need a longer one? For when you smoke king-size cigarettes? (laughs) For goodness sake, stop looking at yourself in the mirror. Hello, folks. What's cooking? Hello, Mr. Wilcox. I say, old chap. Is it necessary to use such weird expressions as what's cooking, how's everything, and what do you know? Really, they're rather senseless and unanswerable, you know. Oh, quite. Say what? <laughs> Say, what goes on here anyway? Is he on the level, Molly? Well, he thinks he's on the level, but it's uphill work. <laughs> <laughs> Won't you step in and have a spot of tea, old chap? I say, be a good girl and put the kettle on, old thing. We're not having any tea and don't call me an old thing. <laughs> Slug a root beer or something, Mr. Wilcox. <laughs> no, thanks, but I'd still like to know what this is all about. Well, I tell you, he saw Ronald Coleman in a picture the other night, and he's been like this ever since. I only hope they don't revive King Kong. <laughs> I've had enough of this monkey business. <laughs> well, hey, look, Fibber. McGee, Mr. Wilcox is speaking to you. Turn around. I can see him. I'm looking in the mirror, ain't I? Hey, Harlow, you see anything different about me? Mm, no, except your face is dirty. You've got a smudge on your upper lip there. That ain't a smudge, it's a mustache. Gee, is it? <laughs> I bet Mr. Wilcox was never so foolish as to try and raise a mustache. Well, you'd lose that bet, Molly. I tried to raise one once, but I had to give it up. <laughs> I got a nasty suspicion, folks, that this is leading into something. <laughs> I can't get out of it now. <laughs> Why did you give it up, Mr. Wilcox? Well, it interfered with business. Every time I started to demonstrate Johnson's self-polishing glow coat and how it keeps linoleum spotless and sparkling with a minimum of time and effort, no rubbing or buffing. Yes, yes, yes. You just pour a little out, 
spread it on and wait for it to dry to a gorgeous mirror-like finish, and it restores the beauty of the pattern and gives housewives hours of extra leisure, and don't accept any substitutes and get some from your nearest dealer today. We know, we know, we know. Now, what about your mustache? Yes, how did it interfere with your business, uh, Mr. Wilcox? Well, I'll tell you. I'd no sooner get through telling people how spotless it made their linoleum than I'd look down and see that black smudge. Every time I looked down, there it was. It made me nervous. So I shaved it off. <laughs> oh, that's it. I feel like Uncle Dennis trying to pass Joe's Tavern. I walked right into it. <laughs> Did you bring me that book, Harlow? Oh, yes, yes. Here. Uh, no hurry about returning it, pal. Keep it as long as you like. Well, so long. Now. So long, Harlow. <sighs> What's the book, dearie? It's an English uh, book, uh, How to Play Cricket. How to Play with a Cricket? Oh, no, you don't, Mickey. I won't have one in the house. But, Molly, it's just a game. I don't care if it is. In the first place, they're too noisy. Aww. Tweet, tweet, tweet all night long. No, sir, if you but want... Molly, to... Molly, this cricket ain't an insect. I know an insect when I see one. But this is like baseball, only the difference That's is... That's even worse. A man of your age playing baseball with a cricket. Oh. <laughs> Heavenly days, McGee. First an English accent, and then mustache and a monocle, and now you play games with bugs. Oh. What's gotten into you? Hey, Molly. What? You ever go to a quilting bee? Yes, I have. You ever get stung? Don't be silly. It wasn't a real bee. Well, cricket ain't real. Ain't a real cricket, either. That's the English name for baseball. <laughs> all right, dearie, all right. I give up. Go out and play golf with a grasshopper. Oh. I won't... Play ball. Er, come in. Oh. Oh, hi, sis. Hi, mister. Hi, uh... Do you want to send any messages to Santa Claus? My mama take me down to Bomb Town Department Store tonight. Oh, she is, huh? Hmm? I said she is, eh? Guess what? Your mama's going to take you down to see Santa Claus. Hi, Noah. Well, you want me to tell him anything for you? Oh, I don't know, sis. What's the procedure? Hmm? How do you go about it? On the streetcar. <laughs> I mean, what is the modus operandi? Uh, the gimmick? The... Oh, you mean how do you tell Santa Claus what you want, hmm? <laughs> That roughly was the thought I was trying to convey, sis. Oh. Well, first you get in line with the other kid. Yeah. And then when it's your turn to talk to him, he takes you up on his lap, and that's the part I don't like, because his beard always smells like mothballs. <laughs> well, you got to overlook that, sis. They say the moths are terrible at the North Pole. <laughs> now, then what happens? I don't know. I've never been there. <laughs> I don't mean at the North Pole. I mean with Santa Claus. Yeah. Well, then you tell him everything you want, and there's a lady standing there, and she writes it all down and asks you what your papa's name is and has you got a charge account. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, that's Santa Claus's secretary. Well, gee, mister, if she was my secretary, I bet you I'd fire her, I bet you. You would? Why? Sure. Well, last year, when I was talking to Santa Claus, you know what she said to him? What she said? She said... Speak up, you big dope. How can I write this down if you keep mumbling in your beer? Oh. <laughs> Gee. Is there any way to talk to Santa Claus? I ask you. Well, I should say not. I, I guess he didn't hear her say it, because if it's the same girl I saw there last year, she had some very well-filled stockings. McGee. And see, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Well, I guess I haven't got any message for Chris just at the moment, sis. Thanks, anyway. Well, that's okay, mister. But I hope if you ever have a mustache, you won't smell like mothballs. Oh, don't worry, sis. It won't. I, I got a kind of an instinct for a personal appearance. I've always been kind of a snappy dresser and man about town. What town? Oh. Peoria, mostly. Oh, my God. Why, sis, when I was just a young fella... I was a chic of Western Illinois. Oh, dear. With my bell-bottom pants and jazz bow tie. When I worked in the big mill there, I was quite the dude. <laughs> mill dude McGee, I was. Uh... <laughs> mill dude McGee, a magnificent mask of masculine muscle and manly manners, mesmerizing the maidens in the Midwest, and mentioned most every month in many of the men's magazines as the mirror and model for male millinery merchants, meticulous material manufacturers, and miscellaneous members of the Metropolitan Mob, Mighty and magnetic from November through May, but come and hear the King's Men sing Rose O'Grey. Rosie, Rosie, Rosie O'Day, she is the prettiest thing. Under her window from miles away, the fellows all gather and sing Rose O'Day. Rose a day, you're my filigadoo, she's in a 
on your mustache? Yeah. They need a lot of encouragement when they're young like this. You know the old saying, Molly, great oaks from little acorns grow. <laughs> I didn't know you wanted a tree. <laughs> I thought you just wanted a bush. And goodness knows you've been getting enough raspberries to start one. <laughs> oh, well, don't let it get you down, old girl. Chin up, pip, 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 carry on and all of that. Oh, stop talking like that. I hope that's the guy from Haggerty Snuggery Coggery with my velvet smoking jacket. Come in, Haggerty. Oh, how do you do, Mrs. Uppington? Come in, dear. Oh, ah, how do you do, Mrs. McGee? I just popped into a... Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I, uh, I don't believe I've met this gentleman. Hot dog, you hear that, Molly? <laughs> she didn't know me with my mustache. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, you're Mr. McGee. Oh, sure, right Oh, I do hope you'll forgive me, my dear. <laughs> Oh, forgive you. Why, heavenly days, you're lucky if he doesn't kiss you, Abigail. Oops. To think that his mustache would fool anybody that much. What did I tell you, Molly? I knew mustache? when I... Mustache? What mustache? Is Mr. McGee growing a mustache? Why, uh, yes, Abigail. Isn't that why you didn't recognize him? Oh, no, my dear. How ridiculous. No, I have a new lawn yet with bifocal lenses, and I simply can't see a thing. Mm. <laughs> Look up, here. Don't the bifocal part of them glasses magnify? Why, well, yes, of course. Why? Well, come here. Take a peep at my upper lip. Very well. Yeah. Do you see anything, Abigail? <gasps> oh, my dear. He really should do something about his skin. Those, those big purple spots. Raise your sights, Uppy. That's my necktie. <laughs> May, of course, of course, how stupid of me, wasn't it? Yes, it certainly was. <laughs> McGee. Well, what can we do for you, Abigail? Or is this a social call? Oh, uh, no, no, Mr. McGee. I am a committee of one from our ladies' club to inspect some of the city parks. And I thought you might care to go along. We have information from a very high source that parts of them are to be sold for parking lots. Oh, well, come down off your high source and tell us about it, Uppy. Now, uh, please, Mr. McGee. This is not a subject for liberty. Well, what's so liberty. serious about it, Abigail? It's city property, and they can sell it for parking if they want to. Oh, my dear, have you no thought for our little wild creatures? You mean them parking lot attendants? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. McGee, you're impossible. <laughs> you and your little gray mustache. <laughs> my mustache ain't gray. It will be by the time it's a mustache. <laughs> Good old up. You know, Molly, I, I got a kind of a sneaking fondness for the old percher on. <laughs> Personally, I think she's a very nice woman. Sure she is. Uppy's an old peach. Do you really think so? Sure I do. She's an old, wrinkled, dried up peach that should have been pickled and canned years ago. <laughs> Hand me the phone, Molly. What are you going to do? I'm going to call Haggerty's Snuggery Toggery and see why they don't send out my smoking jacket. All right, here. Thanks. Hello, operator. Give me Haggerty's Snuggery. 
Oh, is that you, Mert? How's every little thing, Mert? It is, eh? What say, Mert? Your sister got pinched, eh? For going too slow. Heavenly days in her car, McGee. No, a revolving door. (laughs) What say, Mert? Okay, I'll call him later. Goodbye. Say, you know, one of these days you're going to get your number right off and won't have time for one of those things. (laughs) That'll be too bad. I'd hate to take a poll on it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, well. For goodness sakes, McGee, take your fingers out of your mouth. I just feel inside of my upper lip, Molly. My mustache don't seem to be growing very fast. Just wondered if it got mixed up and was growing in instead of out. You know, (laughs) sometimes you find the Hey there, Johnny. How's the mustache? Oh, hi, old-timer. Those lotions you gave me don't seem to have done much good. Johnny, here, try this one. Oh, Oh, is this another one of your grandmother's concoctions, Mr. Oldtimer? Yep. Grandma swears by this one. Fact is, she swears a lot by this one. We have to send the kids up to bed. (laughs) (laughs) That's pretty good, old timer. (laughs) Yes, but that ain't the way I hear it. The way I hear it, one fellow says, the telephone says, he says, see where the aviator flew from Denver to New York in less than 12 hours. That so, says Tutterfeller. Must have been in a hurry. Have a wife from New York? No, says the first fellow. In Denver. <laughs> well, try this stuff on your mustache, Johnny, and let me know what happens. Okay, but I'm getting kind of discouraged. The more stuff I put on, the less it seems to grow. Grow? Why, yes. Why not? Oh, my goodness, and I've been giving him stuff to make it go away. Oh. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. What you doing, Mom? I'm throwing out all these fancy hair tonics and no. lotions. I've had enough of this now. Oh, no, Mom. I'm sorry, dearie. I can't stand this primping and posing any longer. Oh. You'll have to choose between me and your mustache. You mean? Yes. Now, which will it be? Well, I'll take the mustache. Oh. Oh. Ah. <laughs> You know what I've been doing today? Well, I've been just an old inquiring reporter, asking women here and there a few questions about my favorite product, Johnson's Glow Coat, the easy-to-use floor polish. What do you like best about Glow Coat, I asked them. And do you know, I got a lot of different answers, but they all add up to the same thing. Glow Coat is an all-around product. It has so many good points that it pleases everybody. One woman said, I like the lasting luster Glow Coat gives my linoleum floor. Another talked about the uniform film that doesn't chip or wear off unevenly. Someone else said she liked its quick drying and ease of application. And, of course, everybody sang the praises of Glow Coat for the way it saves work. It needs no rubbing or buffing. Now, I knew all these good things about Glow Coat, but still it did me good to hear these women so enthusiastic. And I'd like to pass that enthusiasm along to any of you who haven't tried Johnson's self-polishing Glow Coat on your linoleum floors. And one final word. Remember, there's only one Johnson's self-polishing Glow Coat. Trying to raise a mustache, dearie. Oh, it's a kind of old family tradition, Molly. Ever see our family album? All my ancestors had beards down to here. Oh, no razors? No, no chins. <laughs> Good night. Good night, all. This is Marla Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax Finishes for Home and Industry. Inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. Is your car sitting out in front of your house now? If it is, take a quick look at it. Doesn't it need a cleaning and polishing job? Well, then just try Johnson's Car New, the sensational auto polish that does two jobs at once. Both cleans and polishes in one application. Car New is a wonderful labor saver. It's inexpensive, and it offers an easy way for you to take better care of your automobile. Remember the name, Johnson's Car New, spelled C-A-R-N-U. Made by the makers of Johnson's Wax. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs> 